So let's crack on with this week's um, Saren, Sarah's Weekend Weekly Summary. Um, so I'm going to run through, just in regards to my clients, what they've been up to, any complex cases and stuff that's kind of been weird with them. And then I'm going to talk about um, supplements when it comes to breeding and whether you should or shouldn't supplement and if you do, which ones you should or shouldn't do. Um, and it'd be great for you to make comments as we go along because I know we've got breeders online we've got some that are planning to breed some that are already breeding so it'd be great if you could share what you did in your experiences as well for the people that haven't met me before I'm Sarah Lamont I'm the canine family planner um, I'm here basically to help you to plan prepare and parent puppies um, I offer a mobile breeder service to people that are, well, in an area that I cover, um, but then I also offer online advice as well. So, in regards to my updates this week, um, and I, do you know what? I haven't scanned any dogs um, in pup this week. They've either been re-scanned or they've been misses, which is quite interesting. Um, I also need to update you on my dogs as well because I know I mentioned that I mated dogs and I never told you the results either so I'll tell you about that but in regards to misses we had a whippet that I did bloods for um I think we did either two or three bloods I gave her the thumbs up to mate uh, she had one mating that was a tie and unfortunately she missed so a bit unusual and we're not really sure why um she was a maiden, so she's never had a litter before. And I do feel that maidens do have a higher, um, not a high chance of missing, but it's not unusual for maidens to miss first time, regardless of the breed. I also scanned a lady that had a pug and a French bulldog. I'd previously scanned the pug in the past and she was in pup. She mated her um, again and her companion French Bulldog and they both missed as well. So she was quite gutted about that, understandably so. Um, I've had re-scans for, um, actually today, I've had a chow come to me. So she was actually scanned by somebody else and they confirmed that she had six pups. The owner was quite concerned that she hadn't really gained any weight. Um, she did have saggy teats, like baggy boobs, um, but she just her body shape, shape hadn't changed and she was already 50-something days. I think she worked her out to be 53 days. Um, so I re-scanned her. She just wanted to peace of mind, basically. I scanned her and she was in part, but I could only see two. Um, I measured the skulls and they did work out as 51 days. That can be plus or minus three days, so it ties in with her 53 days that she was thinking. So at least... She, Though it was a pain that she's had to get a second scan, at least you know she definitely is in pup. Who knows what's happened to the four? Um, I said her bladder was really full, so I said she could be hiding one, but I would wouldn't expect any more than that. So effectively, she's got half the litter she thought she might be having. Um, the bitch is older, not really old, but she's older. I think she's five. She's never had a litter before, so she might have reabsorbed. Who knows? Um, but she's definitely in pup, but with three. I also re-scanned a Labrador who I did bloods for and um, we'd scanned her early just because I was actually at the breeder's house to scan other dogs and do other bits and bobs and we quickly run the scanner over her, and I said yeah she is in pup I think maybe about seven and um, they're quite heavyweight labs so they're not the easiest to scan um, but we agreed to do a re-scan I scanned her earlier this week and uh, it looked like five so it wasn't seven as I initially thought I could have just double scanned. It was, as I say, quite hard to scan at that point. Anyway, so she knows she's got five come in. And then I did a progress scan for a French bulldog who wasn't ovulation tested, but I did do an AI um, only because the stud lives with the female and he has no interest in there whatsoever. <laughs> um, so, and he can happily um, get on a mate by himself. He doesn't need um, AIs to be done. Um, but, in this instance, he wasn't interested in her, so we did AI. Um, I'd already scanned her with six puppies, um, but she just wanted a progress scan, and we rescanned. I said, yeah, still six pups. We did a measure, um, because she did an ovulation test, just to be sure that the dates we were uh, going with were what the puppy's development looked like, and it did all tie in as well, so she was happy bunny. But yeah, so no like new scans for bitches in pup. Um, a quick update on mine. So I did tell you oh, way back when about um, a bitch that I co-owned. It was actually the episode that I talked about co-ownership. A bitch I co-owned and a dog I co-owned. So neither of them live with me, but I've mated them. 
Um, she is in pup. This female actually had nine pups in her first litter. She missed the next mate in that we had, but the stud dog, we uh, came apparently missed another bitch also, and he was our older stud dog. Um, so this time I put her to my own dog, and she is in pup, but only with two, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but it is what it is. So she's in the room with me now, because she's back with me for me to rear the litter. Um, and she's plodding along. So hopefully next week, um, she'll, uh, I'm hoping she's going to self whelp, but she's a bulldog, so we'll see. But she did self whelp one of the nine pups on her first litter. So I'm hoping that she could possibly push out two, no dramas. Obviously, I'm at the benefit of I can scan, um, a scanner so I can check that pups are doing all okay, heart rate and that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll see. Um, and also I did make another two of my bitches of which one missed um, and there's no reason for her to have missed however she did pick up a uh, or had developed a urine infection um, after mating so I don't know whether that had something to do with it or not I'm not quite sure and um, she seemed to give all um, indications that she was in pub to be fair but I honestly stick to my word and I don't scan them early I do what I advise to everybody else and say you've got to be at least 28 days um, and that she actually gave all the signs of being so I was really shocked when she wasn't um, and as disappointed as we all are when you you get one that misses but it's not end of the world because I've made she's actually my, one of my younger bitches anyway I mated an older bitch and it was actually a, the other bitch I mated. It was her last chance. And uh, actually she was a chilled AI and she is in pup. So I'm really pleased with that. I've scanned her for four. Uh, she had two on her first litter and she had six on her second litter of which um, four survived. So I'm happy with four of their strong, healthy pups. So she's plodding along and she gave no signs of being in um pregnant at all apart from she missed one meal and I thought this dog never not eats so um, I think she possibly is but she looks no different now Ooh, rolling into 35 days um come uh yesterday actually I think yeah 35 days yesterday so she's all looking good and fine um, so that's an update on me as well and obviously I'll just keep you updated because I have bred another bitch as well um, that I co-own but it's too early to know anything on her um, we did we mated her previously and she missed and I'm um, but it was all just a mad panic rush because I had actually um, an event that weekend and we had to shoehorn in this mating as well and it was quite a distance so um, I've used my own stud on her this time round so she's had to do at least travelling as possible she's quite a nervous oh you're back I lost you again <laughs> sorry I lost you for a bit um so yeah, so with this bitch, I've kept her travel to a minimum. Um, we've only covered her once, uh, dog to dog AI. Um, let's see what happens. She, uh, we did two bloods. Um, she went up quick actually, but she's a bulldog, so it's no surprise. Um, but too early to scan her, so I'll keep you updated. So um, yeah, I could, which is why I'm in this a different room because basically I'm set up. One of the rooms is going to be the puppy room, and hence why I'm sitting in here with a pregnant dog. Um, who's just snoozing away and being fairly relaxed but the puppy pen set up and all sorts which I might go for another day but I'm not doing it tonight um in regards to bloods um I had a few last minute dot coms yesterday so people that I've never spoken to before they randomly found my number online but needed urgent bloods um I had a border collie uh, the guy basically she'd had two litters before and she ovulates like crazy like round 23 24 days I think he told me and she successfully had litters of uh, four pu uh, six pups. Um, anyway, this time he said it's really weird. She's like standing for, my, for his dog. She's looking really keen that she wants to be mated, but she was only like day six. So he said she's really confused me because she's always been really late. Now, from my experience, they don't go from super late to really early. She might go late to average, but I can't see her being at the opposite end of the spectrum. So anyway, for peace of mind, you just said, I can have blood test her. We tested her. She's come back as 1.12, so nowhere near ready. Um, so <laughs> who knows what she's up to? She's just being a bit flirty. Um, but that put his mind at rest of, OK, I'm, I don't need to do any sort of last minute matings dot com. Um, she needs to wait as usual. Also did a bulldog that was lastminute.com and uh, she come back as mate immediately. So off that guy went. I think he was going up to Reading for his mating. 
then I've had some of my usual clients, an American Bulldog who hadn't been in season. Um, she'd been given the peach, well, she was over due for a season and uh, the owners decided to give her pg 600 which basically makes them ovulate um i've never used it myself um i know people have used it to great success personally i'm a bit more of a i'll wait until they come to season and i do vitamin e which we're going to talk about um rather than that chemical approach but i you know people need them in season to make them then that's down to them anyway did bring her in we did the first blood she was 2.9 she did plateau we did a second blood she was the same so i think the owner was getting a bit concerned of is this a proper season because we're going to this pg 600 so no keep testing she's definitely in season and um, generally if they're not in season it'd be one or below for two consecutive blood tests unless you can definitely see discharge and blood and all that kind of stuff Anyway, we retested, she shot up to 8.56, so she'd ovulated and I advised when she should be mated. Um, also had a Labrador, uh, one of my regulars, she started off quite early because she didn't, she's had a few in season, she said I don't know where she is, so let's just do bloods. She was really low, 0 0.6, then we redid it again, she was 2.07. Um, I think I advised to retest in four days because that's the maximum I would let you go on that number. And um, the stud was actually, well, the stud owner was actually out the country. So she said, I'm not going to retest her for another week, which I was like, oh, oh my God, that's like a real, <laughs> really long time. I hope they haven't missed her in that week. Um, but she come back as 15.30, which is a like, mate immediately. So that was perfect. I think she mated her the next day. Um, which should be a fine window for a lab anyway. She'd gone up really slow and steady, so it shouldn't be anything to be worried about. Um, I had another Labrador, the next few labs actually, had another Labrador. Um, the client had found me, her vets were doing blood testing and it was, from what we can work out, we think it was in-house, but it was all a bit shady. She didn't really know what she was asking for. She wasn't really sure what she got back. Um tried to do this mating it didn't work found me we ended up doing bloods and she was way over she was like uh 70.75 like she they totally missed her and she'd been doing these bloods like really early going to the vets repetitively and she went back to the vets and raised this her issue um, and basically they didn't even argue with her they just said oh we'll give you a refund or we'll put it on account um which if they've been doing what they said they've been doing I'm sure they wouldn't have given in that easy. Um, so this time, basically, she came back to me to do bloods and she was a day nine and she was 5.21. So I said she's pretty much on the cusp of ovulation. I wouldn't bother retesting. I would just take her to the stud dog in 48 hours, of which I was involved with the AI anyway with that. So we'll see how she goes with that one. But it just raises the importance of if your vets are doing these progesterone blood tests, that it is a fully quantitative test Um not the semi because then that's just going by their eyesight and then sort of making up the interpretation of the wells and then the last lab um was just one that took a while to ovulate actually um, again one of my regulars she was 0 0.49 then she went up to 1.08 then she crept up to 3.26 and then finally she ovulated at 17.04 um, so just uh, unusual for a lab to take that long to be honest but I'm guessing that again if she's got a lot of dogs in season at the same time she just probably started testing her a bit too early uh, I always say start testing day six to nine a season labs generally you can leave it to day nine bulldogs or push forward to day six um, and then obviously go with your instinct of what you know if they might be an early one or not so that is everything up to date in regards to um, clients and um, what they've been up to and me and what I have been up to. So let's crack on about talking about supplements. So I'm just going to reintroduce myself again for anyone that's joined us halfway through. So I'm Sarah Lamont, the Canine Family Planner, and we're going to talk about supplements and whether you should supplement when breeding or not. Now, we will get the argument as um, most people will argue, <laughs> for the sake of it sometimes, but um, that then um, why should you supplement? Because dogs in nature have bred and produce pups and they get on with it and everything's fine and dandy. And years ago, 
like my nan, my great nan, my whoever, whoever, when I was, you know, dot, um, we never used to supplement and everything was fine. And I have no doubt that that is possibly true for a lot of people and a lot of dogs. Um, but it comes down to whether you can improve a situation your female is in or whether you can improve your chances of pregnancy or the condition of a dog or, you know, the maintenance of a pregnancy. So I have no doubt that you cannot need to do any supplements or any complementary um, medicines and you'll have a strong line and they push out pups and they get on with it and they do everything they need to do. However, I do caveat that with there may be some particular breeds that could do with a helping hand or you might have a female or you know of a bloodline um, that has a particular um not not issue but maybe a condition that keeps popping up that actually if you did supplement feed you could help alleviate those problems before they even start okay so i'm just going to run through some of the supplements that i feel um as breeders we come into contact the most and the ones that are most relevant to us and it'd be great if you make any comments as we go along as to whether i suppose it'd be good if you did like thumbs up if i if you um supplement with one of the ones that I mentioned just to, out of interest as a bit of a straw poll so to speak so the first one I'm going to talk about is vitamin E and specifically wheat germ vitamin E so you can get um oh what's the word it's gone out of my brain synthetic that's it <laughs> you can get synthetic vitamin E but it's believed that you want a natural vitamin E so wheat germ is a natural vitamin E it comes from the kernel I believe um and basically, this is a oil that can be used, well, that is believed to flush the reproductive organs of any free radicals. So it's like a cleansing for the reproductive organs. So if there was something there throwing them out of kilter, you would hope that this vitamin E would flush it away and get rid of it or lower the amount that's there. Um, so it's a general fertility reproduction oil that's good to use. Now, it's good to use on male and female to be honest so i personally put all my bitches on um vitamin e um when definitely if i'm breeding um i've even actually started doing it with my older girls that are coming into season in a hope to not trigger pio um not saying that there's a definite connection there but i kind of just want them to have a really clean and tidy season and then it end and then then carry on as usual um so i pretty much got all my dogs on it um at the moment because i'm breeding them or the older and um, but it's also good for males because again for them to produce good quality sperm you don't want any free radicals anything they're knocking them off kilter and what it will well a lot of people also report is that it gives them a better third fraction so i'm not going to go into ai in and all that kind of stuff but basically it gives them more prostate fluid to push everything up the pipes if you're doing a natural mating which is never going to be a bad thing because the further it gets pushed up uh, the less it has to swim so to speak so vitamin e um there's places you can buy it online door west herbs are pretty good for dog um supplements and that kind of stuff and i'm not sponsored by them uh, i've actually tried to get an interview with them um because i do audio captures and stuff as well and um, but they've not got back to me yet so i need to chase them a bit on that but vitamin e basically that's what it's for um i've heard of some people trying to use it to bring bitches into season so they give it to them for two weeks and then stop and then give it to them for two weeks again um i don't know whether that works or not i've never used it that way but i just do like it as a general um antioxidant basically um on that note i did i uh, hadn't used it up until um one of my bitches i've already mentioned i had the litter of two um and i changed two things when i mated her the second time i didn't take her out on any walks and uh, which i've covered fear and how that can impact pregnancy and i started her on vitamin e and as i say i went from a litter of two to a litter of six um so for me i'm just like um, for what it costs 15 quid well actually no i buy quite a big one to be fair it might be more like 25 quid but for what it costs um is worth doing in my opinion um the next one is folic acid so i actually um give my dogs folic acid my breeding gals but i don't believe it needs to be given to all females so i would only supplement dogs that are brachycephalic so any of the flat face breeds so your bostons your frenchies your bulldogs 
um, your pugs, um, anything that's got a really short face. I, I, I might even be tempted with the boxers, to be honest. Then they're not as short, but I think I, their muzzle isn't as long as a standard muzzle, basically. Um, a folic acid is meant to prevent cleft palates. So the um, Royal Canin did a study into supplementing with folic acid and how it would impact the cleft palate rates or not. They... Their report basically said that it did reduce the chances of cleft palates. Um, I just feel for what it costs, it's worth doing, <laughs> particularly for flat face breeds, not necessarily for any of your standard like longer muzzle dogs. Um, it is a case of um, it can be hereditary. It can just happen. Something just um, any deformity in a puppy can just happen. It can just be triggered. Uh, it could be environmental. It could be DNA. It can be something the bitch is eating. Like you, you just get deformity. So if you get the odd one, it just there's just a bit of bad luck. Um, but personally, if if you're a breed that's prone to them, like flat face breeds, because basically how their um, nose and palate and mouth forms is different, and it's it basically more development in a shorter, smaller space. So there's more chances of something going wrong. Um, the thing you need to be aware of is you need to give the right dose folic acid. So I see a lot of people are buying the stuff that you can get off the shelf down Sainsbury's or Asda or wherever. Uh, that dosage isn't nowhere near high enough. You'd probably need to give like a standard weight bulldog 12 of those uh, tablets. So you need to make sure that you buy the 5 mg, okay, the 5 milligrams. Um, Amazon sell it, eBay look at it, uh, uh, eBay look at it, eBay sell it as well. Um, it's called, personally, the one I always use is called Biotech. Um, it's a little white bottle um, I think you get 100 tablets or whatever in there and I would start them on that from day one of season and carry it either till the bottle's finished off the puppies are born um, or at least till when the pups are formed so at least until 40 days gestation okay just got a comment from Sharon uh, the border collie I bred her never had a season or was silent until I put her on vitamin A oh brilliant yeah and within months she's in season oh excellent well, there you go then. So a testament about vitamin E that is worth doing. It is one I definitely, for what it costs, it's worth doing. And as is the folic acid, if you've got brachycephalic, it's definitely worth doing. Now, another um, supplement talked about is raspberry leaf. Um, and this is meant to aid natural deliveries and self well pins. It's meant to sort of smooth the uterus um, walls and make delivery easier I've heard a breeder saying that it makes like the puppies more oily like the sacks more oily and slippy that everything sort of just gravity takes over it all heads in the right direction better um I have used this um probably a bit pointless because I've got bulldogs and um, from my experience um I've never had a bulldog self whelp a whole litter um they've always had to go in for a c-section at some point frustratingly hopefully until um Amy has hers then maybe that'll change um so I can't talk from personal experience whether I felt it of benefit or not it's almost one of those for what it costs Dorbest herbs sell it it's a little tub I don't know probably about a tenner some people I don't know it probably makes you feel a bit better that you're um making the effort to help a situation um probably doesn't need to be given unless you've had a bit that had a litter before and fe you felt that she struggled at some point and it might add benefit to you then it might be worth doing um but it's one of those i think is still the jury's still out there'd be interesting if anyone does the thumbs up as to whether you've tried the raspberry leaf and whether you felt it worked or not um it's out there it's up to you i'm 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 not going to personally bother with that one myself anymore um but as i say because of the breeds that i've got uh, another one that I like to give, it isn't talked about too much online, is SF50, which um, if anyone is fairly, <laughs> fairly old, might remember a similar product called SA37. And I only know about this because when I was a wee nipper um, and we got our first bulldog that was an ex-brew bitch and she was in really bad condition, the vet told us to give us a, give her SA37. And it's basically like a multi-vitamin that goes on top of their dinner, like a powder form. Um, and I think you've got like Umega and stuff like that, which probably is very similar. Um, but the SF, don't sell SA37 anymore, but SF37. 
50 uh, canine chemists sell it and it's like comes it's like in a little bag but it's really heavy it's like really dense um and i personally give that to all my females from when the pups are born and it's just a general maintenance they're on good food anyway but i just give it as a maintenance to help them maintain their coat to stop them dropping coat because I'm sure we've all probably been in a situation where you have your six week puppy viewings and your girl can just look horrific like she's like some abuse victim was really skinny and got no fur and all that kind of stuff and I've just found ever since I've been given that supplement I don't have any drop their coat mine are really good for a uh, coat anyway because I give a whole nother vitamin to all my other dogs as a as a regular um but I just find it's just a you can chuck it on the food it makes no difference they eat it i've never had one not eat because it's on there um, and it just keeps them in a good condition likewise if you do have a female that you are struggling for condition it normally will be related to a how big the litter size is but generally her condition going into pregnancy um i personally advise not to change food too soon and increase it too much because you just want them to deliver strong little puppies and then them to do all the growing on the outside not on the inside but if you've got a bitch that's slightly out of condition and in pup then then i would be supplement well giving her puppy food and maybe giving her the conditioner on top before or to get more calories into her when she's feeding to give her formula milk um, I know a lot of people love goat's milk I'm not a fan of that but formula milk is a good way of getting a lot of calories into a female without her having to eat loads of food and you just want to hope that then those calories are actually going to help put some more condition into her okay so the final one I'm going to come on to is calcium which gets talked about loads online and people buy it and they don't really know why they're buying it when they should use it now calcium is to prevent enclampsia which is like milk is also known as milk fever it's like an old school milk fever condition generally it will it can happen before they uh, pups are born um, and i actually was concerned about one of my girls that might have enclampsia before pups uh, but it can be ruled out really easily with a blood test so i took her up for bloods and um, they basically said no it's not enclampsia so that's fine um but if you have a bitch um that has enclampsia before she's had the pup, she cannot give her calcium. So enclampsia is when the calcium levels are dropped really low. You need to speak to your vet because if you give calcium before the puppies are born, you trick the body into thinking it's producing more calcium than it needs and it will actually produce even, even less. So you will make the situation worse if you give calcium before she's had the pups. It is okay to give calcium when she's in labour and when she is rearing the pups when she's feeding them. Now, why would you give her calcium when she's in labour? Basically, calcium... Vets are pulling back a bit on using oxytocin, which helps the uterus contract because it's almost like it's such a strong and potent chemical to use... If it's used incorrectly, so before any pups have been born, it can um, rupture uteruses and then you've got a whole bigger dilemma on your hand. So vets are pulling back from using oxytocin a bit and what they will do is they will actually supplement with calcium. Now, I have no doubt that the greater calcium that they can get and use is way better than what we can get over the shelf. But if you have a female whose contractions are slowing or just don't see a weakening, they're not as strong, then by giving them calcium will help. It, it needs to be there to help increase the, well, strengthen the contractions. Not necessarily going to increase them, but it will help. If they're there, it will help them. Now, you can't really OD on calcium when they need it. Um, so if she's in labour and contractions are slowing, give her loads, give her loads, give her loads. Then if it's not working, then you need to speak to a vet. Likewise, if she's weaning pups, if you start getting the head shakes, which is a classic signs, they can have fever and all sorts of go with it. But if you get any head shakes while they're feeding pups, then just whack her a load of calcium. I'm sure the instructions or wherever you buy it from will say how much. Again, um, canine chemist cell dog specific calcium liquid form will get will be able for it to be used and absorbed into the body quicker than tablets or capsules um so read whatever the instructions are on there but basically when it is okay to give calcium you can't really give too much of the stuff um so fill your boots with it basically so with calcium that is one that i do stock in but it is one i do not use it until she's in labor or 
when she's weaning pups um, and I do give it as a preventative so even if they don't have the head shakes with the bulldogs milk can be quite slow to come in so I do just top up on calcium hoping that that's not preventing anything basically um, so what's your thoughts on that any of you agree disagree um, but basically that's a low down they're the ones that I feel the main um, culprits when it comes to breeding and supplements and whether you should or shouldn't do them and yet again it's a grey area there's no hard and fast rule it depends on you your breed and your female's history basically so three things there I'm recommending to think about before you do or don't do it so that's it I'm signing off because it's like 40 minutes I've proper yabbity done so I'm going to sign off for this week as usual um if you have got any comments then make them as you're watching and I'll come by and I'll um, answer them next week I don't even know what I'm talking about next week so I don't even know why I'm mentioning that but um the book is at the four matters and it then we'll be going to the printers so it is truly your last chance for the pre-order now so caninefamilyplanner.com forward slash book you'll get the not born yesterday book and you'll get the puppy playbook once I literally get these books from the printers that whole offer will be gone um, and then it'd be the full price and I'm not actually planning to sell the puppy playbook yet I'm going to probably bundle it up with the home breeder hub um, membership but that's for another day um, just some questions where can I buy calcium from I would recommend canine chemist or if you google um, hyperdrug because they sell human stuff and horsey stuff and all kind of stuff. Um, but Canine Chemist is basically where I go for my calcium, for my S SF50, um, and uh, yeah, just those two. Um, I just do Amazon for my vitamin E um, or Dorwest herbs for that, and I do Amazon for folic acid, and the raspberry leaf would be Dorwest herbs if you fancy that as well. Um, uh, Dan uh, Lisa said, I give mine a mini milk lorry pot yeah yeah so a lot of people uh, in the past have, or online have talked about giving tums which i don't think we can get hold of in england anymore but tums that are basically chalky calcium and ice cream so yeah like um and any form of ice cream dessert will do the job as well and um, i just quite like buying the calcium and getting them the liquid will just get it it's a better concentration and it will get them get it into them quicker basically um oh what have we got? I give Derrily triangles. Yeah, again, between pups ad hoc whilst nursing. Yeah, 120 grams of calcium to each in each one. Yeah. Yeah, all great comments. Yeah, so it's good to see that people know how to correctly use the calcium or alternatives of, yeah, if you hadn't ordered any in, what can you give? So we've talked about ice cream cheese squares tums yeah anything with a high calcium content that's in your fridge you have to be a little bit careful with the dairy because if they're not good with the cream and that kind of stuff um which is why again prefer just the liquid calcium as it is but yeah there's always alternatives that you can actually get calcium into them if you need to um last comment from helen can hormone change cause head shakes um well, Helen, I know you've got bulldogs and they suffer from head shakes anyway. Um, generally, most people believe it to be low glucose. So as from a breed perspective with bulldogs, people generally give them glucose. Then if that doesn't work, they give them calcium. Then if that doesn't work, then I would say um, speak to your vet and get full bloods run. If they come back clear, then I take it as, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's either hormonal um, or it could be stress related um, but you know not to panic but personally I've got one head shaker out of all of my lot um, and I have she has her own packet of custard creams in the cupboard uh, because I know I won't eat those because I don't like them um, so she uh, if I ever see her head shaking which generally tends to be season related with her or stress related from what I can work out she gets a custard cream I've done full bloods on her to check I was worried that she might just naturally have low calcium um, but the vet was like, no, there's nothing wrong with her uh, blood works. So there's nothing wrong with the dog. Um, so she has a little custard cream um, and it normally snaps her out. But some people say it could be habit once they get into it. But from my experience, she doesn't even know that she's doing it. And once I give her the custard cream and she's had a little munch, then she's forgotten. You know, she just carries on as usual and she does. It doesn't get triggered again. Um, but yeah, I, I have no doubt that for some females, it could be hormone related. Right, that's it. I'm signing off. So as I say, any comments, 
hit them up below and I'll come round. Otherwise, I'll see you next week, hopefully with some little bambinos that I might show you on the live. Um, till then, see you later.